Now let's try to do some calculus with polar coordinates. We want to find the slope of the tangent line to this curve at theta equals pi over 3. So we can think of this just in terms of parametric equations, actually, because x is given by r cosine theta, and y is given by r sine theta, and we have an equation for r in terms of theta. So this curve this curve has these parametric equations. The parameter is theta. So to find the slope of the tangent line at that point, we can use the familiar formula dy dx is dy d theta over dx d theta. Let's work over here separately. dx d theta is going to be, well, here I have 2 cosine theta minus sine theta cosine theta. So I'll have negative 2 sine theta minus, and then I have to use the product rule with this. So I'll have sine theta negative sine theta minus cosine theta cosine theta. And this is just negative 2 sine theta plus sine squared minus cosine squared. And at the point that we care about, which is theta equals pi over 3, dx d theta is equal to negative 2 sine of pi over 3 plus sine squared of pi over 3 minus cosine squared of pi over 3. And sine of pi over 3 is root 3 over 2. Its square is 3 fourths. And cosine of pi over 3 is 1 half, so that squared is 1 fourth. At, so at the theta value we're worried about, dx d theta comes out to be this. Now we do the same thing for dy d theta. So this is actually 2 sine theta minus sine squared theta. So the derivative will be 2 cosine theta minus 2 sine theta cosine theta. And at theta equals pi over 3, we get 2 cosine pi over 3, which is just 2 times 1 half minus 2 sine of pi over 3 was root 3 over 2. Cosine of pi over 3 was just a half. Or simplifying, we get 1 minus root 3 over 2. So using this formula, at theta equals pi over 3, the slope of the tangent line is this divided by this. And we can simplify this if we want. If you simplify the expression, you end up with this, it is the slope of the tangent line. theta equals pi over 3. 
So in this problem, let's try to find the points where the tangent line is horizontal or vertical. Recall when we were doing uh, parametric equations, we have a horizontal tangent line when dy d theta equals zero and vertical tangent line when dx d theta equals zero. Now here x is r cosine theta and an r in this case is cosine theta plus sine theta. which is cosine squared theta plus sine theta cosine theta. And dx d theta comes out to be 2 cosine theta negative sine theta using the power rule with this. And if I use the product rule with this, I get sine theta minus sine theta plus cosine theta, cosine theta. So let's see, we have negative two sine theta, cosine theta, minus sine squared plus cosine squared. And using trig identities, this is actually pretty simple. Two sine theta, cosine theta is sine of two theta, so we have negative sine 2 theta and cosine squared minus sine squared is cosine of 2 theta. So this is dx d theta and we have a vertical tangent when this is 0. In other words when cosine of 2 theta equals sine of 2 theta. So this happens when, when this angle... So if you think about when cosine of A equals sine of A, that occurs on the diagonal here. So A is pi over 4 plus a multiple of pi. Because I have pi over 4, I can add pi to it, I can add pi again, I can add pi again, I can add pi again. So this says 2 theta is pi over 4 plus a multiple of pi. And dividing by 2, we see that theta is pi over 8 plus a multiple of pi over 2. So here k is allowed to be any integer, so it could be negative 3, negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, 2, 3. Uh, maybe we just care about theta values between 0 and 2 pi. So we can just list those. When k is 0, we have pi over 8. When k is 1, we have 5 pi over 8. When k is 2, we have 9 pi over 8. When k is 3, we have 13 pi over 8. And when k is 4, we're already past 2 pi. So these are the theta values between 0 and 2 pi. So you could take all multiples of 2 pi added to these to get everything. So that was vertical tangents.